Okay, Western Taxidermy. Deirdre's mother opened the door when I arrived at the baby celebration. She reminded me of a monkey, short with stringy limbs, close set eyes, a wide smiling mouth. Although, unlike a monkey, her face didn't have much expression. Too taut, too shiny. Details you wouldn't notice if you weren't a taxidermist. <laughs> but even with my training, at first glance, I never would have guessed she was a grandmother. Primate, yes. <laughs> grandmother, no. She took my gift bag and set it down on the wicker bench with the other presents. How very kind of you, she said, still smiling, even though my bag, a reused wine sack closed with a piece of masking tape, stood out in a bad way from all the sunny floral design bags spilling over with pastel paper and ribbon. She spent a few moments adjusting all the bags on the bench in order, it seemed, to camouflage mine under the tassels and tissues of others. Then she escorted me across the foyer and into the living room, where there was a bar. <coughs> Not some impromptu card table with a styrofoam cooler on top. This was a permanent bar with a sink and coasters and pink cocktail napkins and several bottles of white wine lined up and ready for consumption. I wondered if Deirdre's mother was a bit loony. That would explain her peculiar looks and that nonstop smile. Everyone's got a loony somewhere in their family, I thought as she poured me a white wine. And hurrah for those families that let their loonies out of the closet. She poured herself a diet pop. Bob, Deirdre's husband, doesn't drink alcohol either. At least I've never smelled booze on him. He's a sober hunter. I can sometimes tell if a hunter was drunk in the field. Ragged cuts, wet cape, broken antlers. Admittedly, with the increasing number of hunters who don't know a thing about field care, it's getting harder to tell who is drunk and who is just ignorant. Cheers, Deirdre's mother said, holding her glass up to me. Cheers, I said, and downed the wine right away so I wouldn't have to carry the glass around with me. I'm practical that way. Deirdre's mother steered me, bordering on a push, really, towards a cluster of women near the fireplace. They were talking about back fat. I stood close to them, pretending to admire the river rock mantle, which would have been a perfect location for a 360-degree pheasant home. So I could hear what they were talking about. It's just so horrible, one woman was saying, to think that it's there, behind you, where everyone but you can see it. I'm Kay, I interrupted. I heard you're talking about back fat. In taxidermy, we peel back the skin and use a deflesher to scrape the fat. Maybe that's what you need. Maybe, she said, dabbing at her mouth with her pink napkin, even though she hadn't eaten anything. The rest of the women were silent. I shook all their hands, taking care not to squeeze too tightly on the fingers with big rings. I didn't want to hurt these women. They hadn't done anything to me. I saw Deirdre on the other side of the room. Her mother had moved in beside her and they were talking closely. I waved. I had indirectly met Deirdre before. It was the first time Bob came to my shop. They had seen my business sign and Bob decided to stop in for a look. Deirdre never even got out of the car but she was memorable. Her hair was done like a lion's pelt. It was the same at the baby celebration. Maybe even a bit lighter, more of an anemic line. I know quite a bit about hair, and I can tell you, there wasn't a natural pelt at the party. <laughs> Some of the hair in the room was positively alien. Deirdre's mother's, for instance. She had black hair, completely black, not a hint of reflection or variation. Trust me. There is no creature on this planet with natural hair that black. <laughs> At a taxidermy competition, you would never see hair like that on a blue ribbon mat. <laughs> Deirdre wore a high neck sweater that clung to her big boobs. Not stupidly big boobs, like the woman with the cocktail laugh who was setting out lamb appetizers and relocating the gifts to the coffee table. No, Deirdre's boobs were within the realm of recessive genetic possibility. <laughs> One look at those breasts, and he knew that Bob, her husband, must be a breast man. <laughs> Which was news to me. He told me he was a leg man. I was wearing shorts, cutoffs at the time. I do have good legs. I crossed the room to chat with Deirdre. She was wearing suede pants with a beautiful nap. Brand new, judging from the lack of wear. Urban acreage people, like Deirdre, do their own version of Western wear. Crop jackets with fringe, 
three-quarter sleeve form-fit shirts, tight leather pants, miniature platinum horseshoes on their ears, maybe two in each ear. I call it Western shrink wrap and refuse to participate. In honor of the baby celebration, I was wearing a khaki colored blouse, even though I hate the slippery material, and I had pressed my jeans. <laughs> Here's Kay. She's a taxidermist, Deirdre said, by way of introducing me as I budged into her inner circle. Isn't that wild? I could stand it, all those poor animals, one woman said. I'm a vegetarian, another one said. <laughs> Except for salmon. You're supposed to eat salmon. <laughs> Kay's a great friend of Bob's, Deirdre said. A great, great friend. Congratulations on the baby, I said. Is she around? Down there. Deirdre pointed towards a wide hallway with several doorways on each side, sort of like a shopping mall. As I walked down the hall looking for the baby, I passed various bedrooms and a den, and then a massive bathroom where Deirdre's mother was applying a top coat of creamy red lipstick. I suppose you're wondering where your work is, she said, turning my way, wondering where he puts it all. Oh no, I said, not at all. I was looking for the baby. Well, she said, I guess Bob won't be hunting much now that he and Deirdre have a baby. I said, I know lots of men who keep hunting once they have children. Some bring their kids along. Perhaps, Deirdre's mother said slowly, perhaps I'm not making myself clear. <laughs> Bob is devoted to Deirdre. <laughs> Under other circumstances, I might have laughed, but even though Deirdre's mother's facial features were in the exact same position as when she had opened the front door for me, <laughs> still smiling, not a wrinkle or furrow in sight, something about her eyes made her seem predatory. Good hunters have warned me, stay away from overprotective mothers. I thought it best to simply respond with a small nod of my head that meant nothing. <laughs> You're not convinced, she said. The trophy room is downstairs. You must see it. I'll take you there. We can pick the baby up on our way back. So they, they go to the trophy room and it's a mess and there's a scene there. But uh, we want to get to the baby before the bar closes for the night, so I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> We're over that. On the way back from the trophy room, Deirdre's mother turned through the doorway of a pink bedroom where a sulky teenage girl sat reading a beauty magazine. The crib, containing a baby, was beside her. I looked into the crib and discovered that the baby was nice and fat, with a bit of acne on her forehead, kind of like the teenage girl. This is Megan, one of the guest daughters, Deirdre's mother said charging us an outrageous eight bucks an hour to sit with that baby. <laughs> Megan continued to read the magazine. Deirdre's mother picked up the baby and kissed her, leaving a red lipstick smear on the baby's cheek. Then she pulled the baby up to her shoulder. I got a look at Deirdre's mother's hands. They were thick and liver spotted with beautifully painted nails. I do a bit of painting myself. Oil paint and a traditional brush for noses, gums, that sort of thing airbrushing for the interiors of ears. So I know fine work. But what fascinated me, especially from my professional point of view, was the way Deirdre's mother's old painted hands were juxtaposed with her smooth face. She was like a taxidermy novelty piece. <laughs> a jackalope. <laughs> when Deirdre's mother and the baby and I came into the living room, the woman with the stupidly big breasts called everyone to sit around the coffee table. Deirdre sat down in a high back chair. I sat a few seats away from her. Deirdre's mother handed me the baby. Then she stood up, held her arms in the air, and slowly twirled once to show the other women her monkey body. I adjusted the baby in my arms, tried to get the knack of holding the bundle and rocking to and fro to keep the baby from whimpering. Well, Deirdre's mother said, I went with Dr. Mento's group again. We saw the big five. Were you hunting? I asked. Because I knew the big five, leopard, cheetah, cape buffalo, elephant, and white rhino. Years ago, hunters went to Africa to try and bag them all. Oh, God, no. It was a surgery safari. My third, actually. This year, I had a breast lift and a bit of lipo, and then went and saw the animals with the rest of the women. Next year, Deirdre's going to come with me. 
The baby's perfect little fingers reached out of the blanket. The women on either side of me were ooing over the baby and whispering to each other about the gifts they'd brought. Store-bought layette sets and leather booties and pink jean jackets and a teeny charm bracelet with coordinating earrings. Nothing like what I had brought. <laughs> I knew that I should be passing the baby around, but I didn't. I wanted to hug her and let her know that I liked her. Nothing was her fault. She had never done anything to embarrass me. The present I had brought was really for her mother. <laughs> Show. 